we know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome to this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. Today, we are talking about what you stand to lose when you don't live in your truest self, your truest passions. But first, I'm Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted. I'm joined by Anna. She's co-founder, my sister. (laughs) Hello, Anna. Hi. I never know if you just want me to say hi or if you want me to say who I am. I know. Well, I entered this podcast in a like blaze of passion. So it's hard to pull me back from that once I've. Well, Sarah, you kind of are always in a blaze of fiery passion, regardless. Like it could be about work. It could be about going for a walk. Like Sarah decided she wants to go for a walk and you're like, when? And she's like, are you there? Are you coming? And you're like, wait, wait, wait. (laughs) Maybe you have to like run because she's in a blaze of passion for that moment and the feel of the pavement or the rocks or the woods under her feet as she blazes the trail forward. Speaking of blazing trails forward, Sarah, what other sparks do you like to light up? So many, so many. This conversation, it's inspired today by our inner circle. Those of you who don't know, we have a (laughs) new-ish Um, a membership program. We've had our enchanted journey membership for, uh, five years. It's five years old right now. May 1st, 2017 was the first intake and it's five years old. And five years later, we put some big girl pants on this membership and we have our inner circle. So it's an upgraded membership experience. And you get to work with those of us here at the Sisters Enchanted in a small group. We work with you on accountability and bringing your intentions into being. And it's a great, it's a great time to work on whatever it is you want to work on. And what's really special about it is that you also, not just with us, you have access to a whole group of readers, guides, coaches, mentors. And you get to book a session one-on-one with a person from the list every month. And it could be the same person. It could be different people. So you can really explore what you're working on from a different perspective. And we have currently a small group of people in our kind of maiden voyage here, but we have um, half of the group is sort of working on being their truest selves which um, is what we're going to talk about here. And the other half of the group is specifically working on building a business for reading tarot or astrology. And that happens to be my zone of expertise as the um, operator and founder of the Sisters Enchanted. So we get questions all the time about, you know, do you do readings? Do you do coaching? Do you do business mentorship? And you know what? We do that all in the inner circle. That's where that all is for all of it. Sarah Milne's in there. Anna's in there. I'm in there. Um, our whole team is in there. Plus, mm-hmm. of course, we have the members also supporting each other. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yeah. And not only that, we have so many of our, yeah, our team members and some of our magical mentors. And we also just welcomed in uh, Rochelle and Carol, who are teacher contributors every month to mm-hmm. our regular Enchanted Journey community. And to get this and get time with them one-on-one is pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yes, it is. And they are both an absolute wealth of knowledge, experience, and information. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's really just this, this call people have had to, like, how do I get this from you? Or how do I get handholding and not just handholding. It's really, it's collaborative. You know, we're in there, like, have you thought of it this way? Have you considered this aspect of it? And this is what has inspired our conversation for today, because, um, we've had the folks in the group, uh, um, really share some 
amazing shares about how they are coming into their own, um, trying, really putting themselves out there mm-hmm. in different ways that they hadn't before. And we thought we would talk about what you stand to lose when you aren't living in your truest, as your truest self. And I think, I mean, the, the, the broad stroke answer is your, if you don't live in your truest self and you don't, you don't live in a way that leaves you feel feeling just so fulfilled every day. And like, hot damn, I am living my purpose. You stand to lose everything. You stand to lose the money you could be making. You stand to lose the amazing relationships you could be having. You stand to lose the relationship with yourself you could be having. Mm -hmm. You stand to lose all of that when you don't, when you don't embrace who you are and figure out who you are and stand in your truth. And to me, that all sums up as your spark, your fire, the spark and the fire that you were born with and you were put here on this earth with, you stand to lose it if you do not live in your greatest truth. Ah, so wise. Authenticity. So wise. <sighs> so much wisdom to be had. Mm, how do you feel about this topic, Anna? I feel a little confronted about this, <laughs> this topic. Um, as you know, Sarah and I, we, we walk on the wild side. We live in the now. Well, I mean, Sarah does, and I'm just in it for the ride. I'm, I'm in it in hopes to try to win it on the other side. <laughs> so for a minute, I was like, oh no, this is just, this is so much. I don't know anything about sparks. Um, but, and that's real life talking. I mean, how many people are listening in like right now today was, and the question, what is my spark? Like how many of you are confronted by that question? Except for Sarah. Sarah's not. I am so inspired by that question. I was immediately confronted by that question, which I bet many people are, which is why, you know, communities like us here at the Sisters Enchanted um, are so helpful because that's like part of the mission to help find the spark. Um, and I was just thinking while Sarah was talking, because as I said, I was confronted. And when she hit start, I was still confronted. I was like, no, wait. And, and, and off she went. And I was really thinking, and my brain went right to astrology and my soul's purpose as it speaks to the lunar nodes. And it prompted me to think of a question that Sarah asked me before we started. And that was like, did you feel like you were living in your spark at like your last job? Um, The other one before that, before that. And I was thinking about real quickly, my mind took an adventure, a quest to self one might say. And, and I was thinking about how my South node, which is kind of like where I was, is in this place of like friendship, camaraderie, groups. And then my North node where my soul's purpose wants to be is in this house of self, of your inner child, of being independent and finding your spark really because it is this house of cre- creativity and fertility and and what's more fertile than like your inner spark right right you know how I feel so, about well, I, well I was thinking because for a while when I worked at my last job I did feel quite sparky because I wore high heels every day and I wore like great makeup. I did my hair and I dressed to impress. Um, but it was also really exhausting. And because I, you know, put on that makeup every day, and this isn't saying that everybody who puts on makeup and gets dressed every day, that this is the, the, the effect it has on them, but it's the effect that it had on me was that it kind of like gave me an inflated ego in the shadow sense. And there were times that I think that like, I wasn't having like earth, uh, my feet on the earth reality moments. I was, I was kind of a facade of making everybody else happy, you know, like being the fabulous one and how much pressure that was to like really stand up to that and like be fabulous and going into work and, 
and being seen as, you know, Anna the Fierce, because like I would walk into work and they'd be like, Anna's here today. Woo! We hear her heels clicking. And I'd be like, I'm here. Um, and <laughs> when I got out of that and like realized, you know, that a lot of that was very toxic and that I wasn't being listened to, like on an emotional level, I was being talked to on a very physical level, <laughs> sometimes in a not a very appropriate way um, and not being taken very seriously. And I got out of that, that I started to kind of toned down into the more like grounded me. Um, and not only that, but this is, I'm going to just take a second, Sarah Waka. Okay. Sister, dearest. Yes. Where are we sister, going? Elder sister, where we're going is, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to say that like that ego place that I was, that was not lighting me up is um, a throwback to growing up and trying to be somebody that you're not trying to be, you know, cool fit in, even though I was never cool and really fit in, but I definitely was like too cool for like anybody. I had like no friends. I definitely had that air about me of like, I'm too cool to do any of this. And really <laughs> that was kind of, you know, it was a big problem. And I had some friends, um, you know, like Chad, who is now my husband, he was my friend, uh, but I was too cool for Chad. He was my friend. I took him everywhere with me. He went on dates with me, like as my friend, like as a third seat, it was just, I don't know. And I was too cool <laughs> for like him. And as I got older and I got out of like my place of ego and he was still my friend, uh, did I like start to realize how kind of ridiculous I've like always had been. And that what lights a spark in me is like really being grounded and nurturing myself and finding out the things that I actually like and not the things that people expect me to like or the way that people expect me to act. You know, fact that they, they want me to act fabulous. Well, maybe I don't always feel fabulous. And some days I just want to wear a flannel shirt and some leggings and some sandals and put my hair up in a mom bun because that's what feels good, even though it drives Sarah crazy, all of my flannel. <laughs> but for me, that feels really good. And it wasn't until I got like the spark of being more grounded, more accepting of like who I was and not with the pressure of trying to be what everybody else wanted me to be. Did then the pieces of my life started falling in together. So you like just finding kind of clearing the path for a spark to emerge was your strategy. I think so. Cause I thought I was living in a spark and it wasn't right. until I was exhausted, you know, taken advantage of at work, you know, not taken seriously, taken advantage of and not taken seriously. It wasn't until like this kind of like implosion of my life my, my tower moment that led to my other tower moment, um, that, that started to light a spark in what I love to do. And mm -hmm. I do love to be home. Like you said, <laughs> before we got on here, that I do love to cook and to have my plants and, and sit and have family movie nights. And it's not about like going out and putting my heels on and, and that doesn't light me up, even though I thought it did. Yeah. So I like it. So you cleared a path. You had to put out what you thought was your spark. Yeah. Start with a blank smoldering sight, a little yeah. smoky in order to ignite the true spark. Yeah. I had to do a, I, I, I had to light, I had to burn out a lot mm -hmm. and it took a lot. Like I used to always think that I was super, I was super self-conscious when I like would go out with all the makeup, all the stuff. And I like went through like a whole year of wearing like less makeup and, and not, you know, it was a really big, now I go on camera. And I hardly wear any, I used to go on camera and it was like, a, I was like decked out. And I thought that that's what made me important. I thought that that spark made me fabulous. Mm -hmm. I thought that that was what it was. And now I'm more confident to leave my house as just me. And that feels good to just be me. So you had to like dumpster fire your whole life though. And, yeah. and I think in that situation, most people will look at that and be like, well, what do I stand to lose here? If I make these changes, I stand to lose a relationship. My, like my, my place where I've been living, I stand to lose, but you look, you had to look at it as like, what do I stand to lose myself? Yeah. And I was losing myself. and losing that spark yourself <laughs> is greater than 
everything else, right? When you make that shift. I was losing myself, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and so I'm still, I'm still fine. confronted because sometimes I'm still like, what is my spark? But like you said, like I get up and I, I touch every one of my plants every morning and I check on them and I make breakfast for smorgasbord work people. I so check in now, to this community where I nurture people here and make sure they have a, a, an imaginary plate of food being delivered to them. I, you know, like, <laughs> so if you didn't live your truest self now, if you didn't, you would stand to lose this spark that you have tended to, and you've really turned into a fire. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be like who I am today. And I greatly like myself more today than I did six years ago, Mm -hmm. even though I was, you know, thinner, had better clothes, (laughs) you know, I had more makeup, but I like the me now way better than the me then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Anna. I still have bad days, but I'm definitely more we I'm feeling more fulfilled in my life. Yeah. And bad days sure. don't feel so bad. You know, I've got bad moments. I think one of the things that I know to be as a person who I think is super sparky, I'm very sparky <laughs> and I pretty much like ruthlessly protect my spark where I'm just like, no, it's not for me. Yes, it is for me. We're going to do it. <laughs> like I, I'm pretty ruthless about that spark situation and like doing what lights me up. But I I think that that comes from, um, learning to learning to be okay with, uh, with setbacks and learning to be okay with the messy stuff, because when you, when you live your, and also learning to be okay with, with really betting on yourself, going all in on you. I said that all the time during our expedition to soul class we just hosted, um, because following my doing things that are like my truest purpose, my truest authentic self, it's not always easy stuff. And it doesn't always come with the most like secure, secure things in my life, but it's always worth it because it's the thing that lights me up. So it doesn't, I don't, I don't get washed away in trying to do it, you know, like starting a business, for example, that comes with all kinds of unknowns, financial unknowns. And, you know, like who's paying for our medical bills. We don't have health insurance. Who's paying for the 401 cakes. We don't have a company that contributes. Like, will there be like, where is the money coming from this month? Like that's, that's all things, but that my spark for lighting other people's spark is so great that it's not that it doesn't, it doesn't burn my spark out having those unknowns. And I think it can be similar if you're, you know, trying to tell a a partner that, you know, maybe you always wanted to travel or something and with or without them, you're going to travel because that's, that's your spark, that's your truest self or, um, you know, like investing in, uh, like private Pilates or something. If you always wanted to get your body, like you, you're tired of feeling stiff every day, but you're concerned about the financial um, cost of that or the time commitment or something. If your truest self is in there, I think just in my life experience, that that's the thing that matters the most, because if it's really your fire, anything can go wrong with it, but your fire will still burn you know, and if it's not your fire and things go wrong, then, you know, it's not your fire because you, you don't withstand, you know, the, the thing, the unknowns, right? So when things go awry, that's a pretty good sign to me, whether you're living in your authentic self or not, because if start stuff starts to get like really crazy and you suddenly feel like I should never have done this. It's all the worst, blah, blah, blah. I knew this was going to happen. It's probably not in alignment with who you like your most authentic self to begin with, because the things that are in alignment with your most authentic self are experiences, their adventures, it's learning, it's, you know, like the growth process and your spark won't go out because of one setback. You know, your spark will probably just burn. It will, your flame will burn stronger because you're like, 
oh, myself is challenging myself. It's like the other day when I was making French onion soup for two families. <laughs> and the first time around, I thought I made enough, cut up enough onions to supply two households. Lo and behold, I had only made enough for one household and I packaged it up for said household. And then I started the adventure of a whole new two hour process of cooking down onions, which I did with no issues. I was like, hmm, more onion cooking for me. And I really rose to the occasion because it lit my hire. See? When a lot of times I kind of, I can oftentimes be a giver upper because things get in my way. Uh, and then I'm like, I can't do this. And I get frustrated and so not, I would not always, French onion soup. Right. I, like, I would ask that question. Is it your spark though? You know, like, is onion? it your spark? Like you, well, you love working here at the sisters enchanted, but like I wouldn't say that like operating a business is your spark, right? That's like, you like working here. You enjoy what we do. You love nurturing people. You love the teaching, but the actual like operation of how is everything happening is not your spark. I wish it was my spark. <laughs> well, no, well, why though? Because I don't wish that cooking French onion soup for, from scratch for two families was my spark. I look at you doing that and I'm like, that seems delightful. That's a nice skill. And nowhere in me though, am I like, I wish I could do that. No, I'm like, it's so good that she has a her spark. That's well, that's so the good. big conundrum because I want to nurture everybody and that, that even applies. So like my spark is to like nurture, especially yeah. like my family and community. And that's part, that's part of the big dilemma when you, and especially when you like bring up boundaries and like protecting your spark and stuff like that too, is because like you are my real life sister and nurturing you and your spark is important to me. So like mm -hmm. when you, like, like when I am working and I feel like I'm not su like supporting your spark thoroughly, I take that really hard. And so it kind of like alters my ego, not my ego, but my spark a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, it aligns with my spark, but at the same time, it's like a blockage in like my, my way of being, which is a little bit more like, how do I fluff pillows and, and fill this couch blanket to be super aesthetically pleasing while also functional. You know? like, it's not to say like, like, and there's a difference I think between not being good at something or like hesitating to want to do it and having a spark for it. Because I think that you could, um, be, I think that you could have a spark for something and be no good at it whatsoever, but your spark for it just burns so strongly that you'll figure it out, you know, and conversely, you could be no good at something or you could be really good at something and have no spark for it. You know, like, um, like I was, I don't know. I used to teach preschool back in the day. And I think, I don't know, I think I was quite good at it. I could have done it forever and it had its moments and it brought me lots of joy, but I had no spark for it. You know, there was definitely days where I was like, oh my gosh, when is this day ending? Ugh, I can't believe it's Monday again. You know, that's not, a, that's not spark. And the same with relationships, you know, if you have like a person that you are always excited to see and like want to be around or they call you up and you're like, yes, yeah, heck yes, let's get together. That's a spark for that relationship, whether it's a friend or a family member or whatever, versus, you know, the person that you, your phone vibrates or rings or whatever. And you're like, please don't be so-and-so that is not a spark. You know, you might, once you're with them, maybe you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad, but that's not a spark. So looking for your truest, most authentic self. And what do you stand to lose? If you don't uncover that is your spark and that joy of living in it. Um, whether it's easy or not, because what do they say? The things that are worth it aren't always easy or something like that. I don't know. But um, anyway, it's a good thing to consider because we've just been with our inner circle talking about like, you know, who are we and what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Who even are we? Well, speaking of quotes, I really like that quote. It's a sex and the city quote, which is, is, um, in, in context as we talked about, I talked about relationships, but I feel like it can be applied to like your life and this talk of spark, but it's when, um, they're all talking about whether or not they're happy and, um, and Samantha's pretty much like, I'm never happy. And Charlotte says something along the lines of, 
I'm happy every day. And they all look at her and she's got 10 heads and she goes, not all day, every day. She's like, but I have a part in my day every day where I am happy. Like I'm happy in my life. I have bad days, but there's always like one moment in my day that I'm happy. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, it's not always perfect. And our spark sometimes fizzles or has a hard time finding, you know, oxygen. Uh, but that as long as you feed it a little bit, even if it's just once every day or once a week that you're, you're feeding to the overall, the net positive of it, Mm -hmm. um, so that you aren't losing and leaving things out behind you. The net positive net positive. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's just, it's really important. So if you've been considering the question, who am I, you know, consider that idea of that flame because I have a really great life. My life is super awesome. And it's also very challenging. I have two kids who are, they're a challenge to parent. My marriage isn't always the best. I'm have aging grandparents. I own a business. Like my life is often challenging. There's not a day that goes by where I'm not like, well, this is the biggest Rubik's cube I've ever had to solve. (laughs) You know, there's lots of challenges, but because I know who I am and I live so much in my zone of sparkiness, like what is going to light my fire right now. And I'm just pretty ruthless about it. I mean, it's pretty rare that I do something that I like really don't want to do. I can't really, Oh my gosh, you like invite Sarah to like a birthday party for your children. She's like, I will come. I won't like it. And I may not stay long. I will likely leave. Do you have cake? (laughs) <laughs> and if like she comes in and you're able to supply her with cake and the pressure to the, with no pressure that she's allowed to leave when she's ready Sarah's there but <laughs> no I'm pretty serious about it like I'm pretty serious about my spark and what does and does not bring <laughs> we just and then the opposite not that Sarah has birthday parties for her kids what if she oh, did no, we don't have birthday parties if she did I would be like how do I cater this event and help yeah. you to set up and clean up when you're done I was looking and uh Facebook reminded me today that my son he'll be five coming up here um actually yeah he is five after this it's his fifth birthday um but he it was four years ago that we had his first birthday party, obviously, but Facebook reminded me of it. And I think that was the last birthday party that we had. We might've had one the next year. I think maybe we did like a June joint party because my kids are born in May and July. And because birthday parties don't bring me, they do not bring me any joy whatsoever to host. Um, I think we did a joint party in June for them the year after that. And then we've not hosted a family birthday party since for or like any birthday party. My kids don't go to public school. So it's not like we've got 20 kids to invite to a class party or something. So we have not, we've not hosted a, I mean, we do stuff to celebrate birthdays. Like don't we do like a lot of stuff to celebrate birthdays, but we do, we go on like an adventure. We do an experience. We don't do the whole, everybody come over and bring us stuff. that's going to clutter up our very small and already cluttered house. So no, thank you. See, I ruthlessly, people might think that that's, I'm, that's not nice. Some people think that, I don't know. I think I know where my spark lies and I protect it fiercely. But it's not at your children's birthday party. <laughs> no, or any child's birthday party for that matter. I don't like birthday parties either, really. Unless it was your children's birthday party, in which case. Yeah, but it would just be us and our kids. Right, in which case I'd go above and beyond to, to, to serve my family. <laughs> anyway, all right. <laughs> So your truest self, what do you stand to lose? If you don't find it, your spark, you don't want to lose your spark. All right, friends, if you're interested in learning about the inner circle and joining us, uh, shoot us a message. We'll get you the details. It is a higher sort of level experience and it includes, it's a six month commitment to the membership and it's, uh, been a delight so far to host. It is a, a real delight. And I am loving getting to know the people in there, like really getting to know them, um, at more than just like through, you know, group, big group things really, uh, looking at what are their challenges and how can we support them in those and cheer them on. And, uh, the group members are in there cheering each other on as well. And it's just been, it's been a real, 
all I can say is it's been a real delight. I think it was the thing I didn't know that I was looking for that we weren't doing, you know, once I yeah, got started. It's been, it's been nice to get on like this one-on-one -on -one with somebody and do a reading or yeah. chat about intentions and blockages. And it's been, it's, it, it's been nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you are interested though, give us a holler and we'll give you the information, but I guess that is it for this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. Thank you, Anna, for hanging out with me. Oh, thanks, Sarah. All right, everybody. We will see you around the internet until next time. Have a magical rest of your day, week ahead, and find that spark. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platforms. So you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters enchanted.com. And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted, and we'll see you in the next episode.